welcome back to the channel Living in the Philippines. This video is all about climatic and geophysical risk in the Philippines. Important elements to take into consideration when choosing the region or settling in the tropical climate of the Philippines, the most western country in the Southeast Asia. In the last part of the video, I will present a map locating four types of climate present in the Philippines. The Philippine archipelago is one of the regions of the planet most exposed to natural disasters. It is the third most affected country in the world by natural disasters behind Vanuatu and Tonga, both located in western South Pacific Ocean. The Philippine archipelago is made up of volcanic islands. The whole country is located in an area of major volcanic and seismic activity called the Pacific Ring of Fire. This fairly narrow region stretching 40,000 kilometers in length encircled the Pacific Ocean. This area has nearly 75% of volcanoes that have emerged on the whole planet. The Philippine archipelago is subject to typhoons. Hurricane, cyclone, and typhoons are all synonyms that come under the same meteorological phenomenon. These are the names given by scientists to these storms according to their place of origin. In Atlantic and North Pacific, storms are called hurricanes. In Pacific Northwest, the same very powerful storms are called typhoons. In Indian Ocean, these are tropical cyclones. About 15 typhoons cross the Philippines each year, especially between the months of May and October. Hazards can be classified into natural and man-made hazards. Climatic and meteorological hazards such as typhoons and drought as well as geophysical hazards such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis are natural hazards. Anthropogenic risks are the risks associated with human activity, including deforestation, mining, and climate change. The Philippines is an archipelago of over 7,000 islands, covering a total area of about 300,000 square kilometers with 36,000 kilometers of coastline. The islands stretch north to south for 1,800 kilometers and east to west for over 1,100 kilometers. They are divided into three groups, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Palawan Island is part of Luzon region. Visayas are divided into three parts, the east called Eastern Visayas, the center, Central Visayas, the west is Western Visayas and Mindanao to the south of the archipelago with the Pacific Ocean to the east and the Sulu Sea to the west. Climate and Meteorological Risk The Philippine archipelago is subject to various climatic and meteorological hazards due to its location in the tropics, along the path of typhoons, monsoons, and El Nino. Risk to Typhoons The north of Luzon, the southeast of Luzon, and the Eastern Visayas are the area most at risk of typhoons. The term typhoon is used to refer all kinds of tropical cyclones classified into four types. Tropical depressions with winds less than 18 meters per second or 64 kilometers per hour. Tropical storms with winds between 18 to 33 meters per second or 65 to 118 kilometers per hour. Typhoons with winds between 33 to 64 meters per second or 119 to 230 kilometers per hour and super typhoons with winds greater than 64 meters per second more than 231 kilometers per hour. Risk to El Niño The areas highly exposed to drought and introduced by El Niño are central and western Mindanao. Risk to projected temperature increase the areas most exposed to increase in temperature during climatology forecast for 2080 are Mindanao and Central Visayas. Rest to projected rainfall change. The rest map for changes in precipitation incorporates both decrease in precipitation during dry season and increase in precipitation during the rainy season. The areas most exposed to projected changes in rainfall are central, Southern and Southern East Luzon and Eastern Visayas. Combined Risk to Climate Disasters This map illustrates the combined risk of all these climate and weather disasters. It was obtained by adding the scores of each risk. The risk of typhoons, the risk of drought, 
the projected risk of temperature increase, and the projected risk of changes in precipitation. The areas most exposed to climatic and meteorological risks are central and southeastern Luzon, as well as eastern Visayas. Geophysical Risks Geophysical events are destructive phenomena. However, these are part of the normal dynamic functioning of our planet. They are due to natural process of terrestrial origin. Four hazards are considered in this category. Earthquakes, landslides due to earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. Earthquakes-prone areas. The red dots represent the epicenters. They are classified according to their magnitude level on Richter scale. The coloring of the territory indicates the number of earthquakes per year. With this relief map, we can see that the east, the oceanic tectonic plate of the Philippines, slides under the archipelago, creating the Philippines Trench. And the west, the Eurasian plate also slides under the archipelago, forming the Manila Trench. Risk to earthquakes the earthquake is present throughout the country. It is lower in Palawan region, part of Visayas, and the north of the archipelago. The Philippine archipelago is shaken each year by numerous earthquakes ranging in magnitude 6 to 6.9 on Richter scale. This earthquake can cause serious damage for several kilometers. Near the epicenter, only suitable buildings are able to resist. Earthquake-induced shallow landslides Ground movement resulting from earthquake produced another natural hazard such as landslide and tsunamis. Most provinces, with the exception of Palawan, are at risk of landslides. Tsunami-prone areas Tsunami is a sea wave resulting from the sudden movement of a large volume of water, usually caused by an earthquake, an underwater landslide, or a volcanic explosion. Most coastal areas have either experienced a tsunami or have a potential for tsunami risk. The second map takes the coastal tsunami risk and including the entire district. The distribution of volcanoes. The Philippines lies on Pacific Ring of Fire. Volcanoes are classified as active, potentially active, and inactive. More than 20 active volcanoes are spread throughout the archipelago. In 1991, the eruption of Pinatubo, located less than 100 kilometers northwest of Manila, was one of the most important eruptions of the 20th century. Combined Risk of Geophysical Disasters This map illustrates the combined risk of geophysical disasters. It was obtained by adding the scores of each risk. The risk of earthquakes, the risk of landslides due to earthquakes, the risk of tsunami, and the risk of volcanic eruptions. Anthropogenic risks are all phenomena that can result from the presence or actions of human beings. This includes deforestation, mining, greenhouse gas emissions, which are responsible for global warming. Population density. The Philippine archipelago is the 12th most populous country in the world, with 110 million inhabitants. The region of Manila has the highest population density in the Philippines, with more than 1,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. Human Development Index This index includes factors related to health, education, and economy. The lowest levels indicate areas of vulnerability due to the lack of structures. Hierarchy of Urban Centers Some regions are administrative, medical, and commercial deserts. This map shows the location of cities according to their level of urbanization. Socioeconomic pressures. The increase of population and changes in consumption habits represent the main factors of pressure on environment with heavy exploitation of natural resources and accelerated soil degradation. Finally, here is the map representing the four types of climates present in the Philippines. First type in blue with two distinct seasons the dry season from November to April, and the rainy season to the rest of the year, with maximum precipitation from June to September. The second type in green does not have any dry season. Precipitation is very heavy in November to April and moderate of the rest of the year. The third type in red with not very pronounced season. Dry from November to April and rainy the rest of the year. The fourth type in yellow 
with rainfall more or less evenly distributed throughout the year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and turn the bell on to receive notification of future posts. A big thank you for your support and encouragement. Please feel free to comment on topics that interest you. Take care and see you soon!